Lauren, so great to talk to you and great to see you're still alive after SAS Celebrity. Thank you. It's been a tough few weeks. So let's just jump straight in. Tell me all about what, what was it like being on the show? What were the other contestants like? Was there rivalry? Do you know what? Actually, there was 12 of us and we were from all different walks of life, um, all got different careers. And where someone had a strength, another person had a weakness. And, you know, people fell into roles in the group. Like to begin with, Anthea was definitely the mum of the group. Like she was always there, is everyone okay? Is everything fine? Um, and, you know, we had Joey there that was constantly making us laugh all the time with his comments and his quick fire. Um, Tony that was always there, he's actually quite a gentle giant. Um, so you see him on screen being all aggressive and angry, but actually behind scenes, he's just like, he's so soft. Um, quite contrasting but no made some really good friends and still talking to all of them on like whatsapp groups and stuff so it was amazing we all made it through you know it was a tough week of our lives but we're stronger for it i mean it's really easy for us to watch from the sofa but it obviously is super super tough do you think that your paralympic training really gave you an edge in the show i think that as an athlete you know you want to win medals for your country and in order to win those medals you've got to go to the deepest darkest places that none of your other opponents are going to go to so you do learn to be in the hurt locker you do learn to push your mental capabilities so it was quite easy to when I was freezing or when my legs hurt or when I thought I couldn't do it to dig into those kind of things that I've learned to do as an athlete and say actually you know what, you've got this you can do this find a way um you know and whatever it takes to get you through it um so it definitely did help and I think having that little bit of extra fitness also helped with the sort of being able to do it for day after day um I think it, everyone could probably do it for a couple of days but it's then how does your body recover and heal to go the next day could you sort of nail down what was the hardest part for you I actually think the hardest part for me might have been the, the the cold and the sleep deprivation like i'm pretty good as an athlete but we're also trained to get our rest to get our recovery uh, to go again and deliver a quality session the next day so you are sort of having broken sleep so if you know when there was less of us on the course you know you've got a full sort of 10 hour period on night watch and you know you go up there in pairs and that's fine but if there's only a few of you you're like okay well we'll do two hours and two hours just staring into pitch black writing stuff down and then like going back to sleep and having an hour and then being woken up again saying it's your turn again it's like oh but I just want to stay here until 6am in the morning and sleep so that was probably the hardest part. You know what like my three-year-old he's never slept well and he wakes me up all the time and I think that that's torture but that is just another level. <laughs> I think I'm trained for that sleep deprivation but an hour and then being woken up is just it's inhumane really isn't it? Yeah I think so and one time I can remember I got so cold that I actually woke up and I was curled around the log burner that we had in there but all the other guys had woken up and they like I was just lying I was like oh, hi, guys. They were like, oh, we thought we'd leave you sleeping. And I was just curled around the log burner. Um, so, yeah, it was odd. Oh, we're being interrupted oh, by no, message. Oh, who's that? Say hello, boo. Oh, she's gone now. Okay, cool. So you also appeared on Strictly back in 2018. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Strictly was the total opposite to SAS. Um, it was glitz, it was glam. Um, I got to wear the most beautiful dresses. My hair and makeup were immaculate every week. Um, it was tough though. Um, me and AJ, you know, we managed to achieve what we wanted to and that was, you know, we knew I wasn't gonna be the best answer and, you know, wasn't gonna always get the highest scores. So we decided that actually, we're gonna go out there every week to make people smile at home, to believe that they can do something that perhaps they didn't think they could do. Um, and in a sense, like we receive the most beautiful message each and every week. And it's quite strange because you think, oh, it's only a TV show. But when you're stood there, like waiting to see if you've got through to the next week, like, it feels really real. Um, and yeah, the, the, when they say like, oh, I'm through to next week, Lauren and AJ, it was like, oh my God, you get to dance for another week. And then you're like, oh, I wonder what dance is next week. And AJ never told me what I had the following week. So I wouldn't worry about it. He only told me like Monday morning when I'd arrived in the studio. So yeah, that was, that was really good fun. It, it must be a fantastic experience. All the dresses, wow. I think at one point, like the little gems on them are like, I think they're a pound each. And like, I had like seven thousand, eight pound, thousand pound dress on at one point because they were, I was just like this, I'm not going to move, okay? I won't move so it doesn't fall apart. And they were like, no, it's okay. Oh, amazing. So obviously you've been on these two fantastic big shows. Do you believe that the media is becoming finally more inclusive of differences? I definitely think that. Um, purely based, I think I saw it change 
around London 2012 with Channel 4. Um, I have yeah, been to quite a few games now and actually seeing the difference in support and the crowds and getting behind disability, Channel 4 managed to, I guess, decipher the classification system because some people were like well how is that person with like an arm missing and a leg racing this person with this and this and it was sort of explained to them using Lexi um and then I also think that since then we've seen more Paralympians appear on um TV adverts which has been great like Sainsbury's have done a fantastic job with that um Vitality Health Insurance I know they've got Ellie Simmons on there at the moment obviously having Johnny Peacock me on Strictly and then I think it's just becoming a way not just for people that you know have a disability or you know a life living with a difference it's just that actually everyone has something that hinders them like my dad's always got a sore knee because he bashed it years ago so actually he can't run loads because it starts hurting and it's like well that's not a disability but everyone has something that holds them back so we're all the same in many ways um but perhaps it just takes the odd few to inspire everyone else that they can do it Absolutely, like we are all linked in some way with with our own struggles, and without even seeing that someone has a difference or struggle, um, they probably do. Um, yeah. So I think it's amazing to see people achieving. So on to sports. All of your hard work with training, you were obviously in amazing shape with SAS as well, and the 2020 Paralympics has been cancelled. How did you deal with that? And how did you overcome that disappointment? Because it must have been really tough. Yeah, I had mixed emotions purely because, you know, disappointment actually, when you sort of get into the final few months training for, you know, four years into a Paralympics or Olympics, you kind of get into, I guess, heightened awareness. You, you make sure everything is done down to the smallest thing. Um, the, the energy's there, the excitement's there, the nerves are there as well. So you're dealing with all of that. But then as soon as training kind of got hindered where swimming pools were closing down, I actually normally live in Lanzarote and I got obviously Spain close their borders. So it was sort of like, well, I'm not getting to train how I want to. And no athlete would want to go to a Paralympics or an Olympics and not be able to deliver records or world records or, you know, beat the previous four years. So in a way, there was then a sense of relief when they said, actually, we're going to move it to 2021. And it was like, I'm totally disappointed, but I was getting frustrated that I couldn't train the best. So probably more relief than disappointment. I didn't really think about that from your perspective. You want to give it everything. And I want to know that I stood there on the start line having done everything I can. Yeah. So before we finish our interview, I wanted to just do a quick fire round because I think it's a great way for viewers to get to know our interviewees and it's a bit of fun. So let's go. Your number one role model. Dame Kelly Holmes because she's absolutely awesome. I met her when I was younger. And then since then I've sat on a sofa with her and told her that she's amazing and we're kind of friends now, so that's really cool. Achievement you're most proud of? Probably actually qualifying for my first Paralympics when I was 14 years old, didn't expect it, and remember just being shocked for the rest of the day. If you could lift lockdown right now, where would you go? I wouldn't go anywhere. I would just invite everybody around for a massive barbecue with drinks and play a game of Twister or card games or just have loads of fun. Love that answer. Glass half full or half empty? Uh, the glass is neither, it is refillable. Ooh, love it. Okay. First thing you'll do when lockdown is over? Probably go for a swim because I didn't think I'd ever say that, but I miss swimming and I'd like to just go for a little paddle. What do you consider is success in life? Doing what makes you happy and each day going to bed with a smile on your face, but waking up the next day excited for doing whatever you've got in front of you. Lauren, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for being on SIBO TV. Thank you for having me. Wishing you a safe week ahead. Take care. Bye. Bye.